All right, let's see here. Oof, oh, snug. Your toe pump kick, huh? Security that goes out. Nothing. No Prindle display. 35 degrees out. I wish. That radio. Mirrors work, so that's a clue. No high beam. Headlights, so no dash back lighting. All right, these are all clues, folks. All right, so dash back lighting, power windows. That stuff seems to work. Okay. Hey there viewers and welcome back to the self Man Auto Channel. That's a 2007 Chevrolet, it's the Impala. And as you just saw, it doesn't run. And a lot of things don't work. And apparently it's been sitting for several years, some, I don't know, some kind of family thing or something or other. Uh, smells like gas, uh, probably rusted out on the bottom. You know, smells like there's gas leaking. Plus what we saw there, the things that work and don't work. And the guy wants to see what it takes to get it running. When the fella dropped this off, he did say that he smelled the essence of mouse, which is pretty normal on a car that sits. He popped the air box out and says this thing was completely filled with mouse goo. And he also noted that there are several wires that were uh, chewed up, didn't appear to be chewed through. <clears throat> As we can see here, like these are some data network wires. Looks like there's possibly still intact several of these yeah the whole bottom of this thing feels pretty spiny lots and lots of wires where the insulation has been chewed but they don't appear to be chewed through okay so we're gonna leave sleeping oh well they even uh, even chewed up that connector the mouse got in here and said um, you know, wires here chewed on the ECM. <clears throat> so lots of rodent damage, it appears. But he decided to just leave that alone. He left the air box out, left the, uh, you know, that metal bar off for us, put the bolts back in there. And that's when he decided to call it quits. Let's see what the world's going on here. Uh, we fixed one thing, we're probably going to fix it all, so we can pick our poison, we can pick the uh, no start, or we can pick, you know, why don't the power windows work, you know, something like that. There is a possibility that I'm wrong, and a possibility that uh, this car has multiple problems, uh, which would be kind of unusual, but if there is rodent damage, uh, especially other places that we can't see, it is quite plausible that the, you know, power windows, power locks are completely unrelated to the no start. You know, the Prindle display doesn't have any boxes around it. I'm going to assume, uh, you know, uh, possibly a common power ground source that turns, you know, something on. For example, the uh, power door locks are all done through the body control module while the power windows are just a completely separate mechanical, you know, switch. And the reason that I think that we might possibly find a common power source of some sort is because if we lose, you know, a common power source, we're going to lose a lot of items. You know, the body module could be turned off. You know, these power windows could stop working and um, we may get ourselves in a little bit of trouble here. But the I think I'm going to start with the power windows, as silly as it seems for a, a no start, no crank diagnosis. Uh, we haven't even plugged in a scan tool yet, but I am curious. We're going to go right to the circuit breaker that powers those windows because that's all it is. Um, it's a circuit breaker that is hot with the retained accessory power relay turned on. And then from there, it is literally all, all mechanical switches. When that switch closes, it doesn't go to a, you know, 13 different computers, roll the windows up and down. It literally sends power through it to the, to the appropriate motor. I am suspicious that once we get to the circuit breaker, we will find that it doesn't have power and then we will take our journey backwards to see where does that power come from? Why isn't this relay turning on? And then, you know, we'll let the, uh, we'll let the truth unfold. 
It's interesting that it turns the fuel pump on. There's a huge delay from the time you turn the key on to the time the dash lights up. So that's something worthy to note. Uh, here's our fuse box. This is our power window circuit breaker. I'm just kind of curious. There's, there's lots of different ways to approach this. This is uh, pretty easy here. You know, everything's pretty accessible is on we're gonna grab a ground we're gonna verify our test light we're gonna come right behind you guys going to cigarette later and it does it lights up and then see if we have power on either one of these which I assume we don't and we do not so that's what I assumed it said that the power for this comes from the wrap relay which on the GM wrap is retained accessory power which I believe is going to be controlled by the body module um, so we may have a bunch of no com situations but right now we're just gathering a little bit of data stuff that's easy to do easy to get to and start figuring things out lots of ways to go about this though folks I'm gonna get more attention glad to see you could join us I didn't realize it was 8 30 already is that our hours operation Looking for them. Well, they're not posting anywhere, as you're saying. You're the one who made me late. <laughs> it was you. Uh, yeah, blame, blame, blame. We don't play the blame game here, Mrs. O. You just Good seeing you. Love you. Mrs. O's not a big morning guy. <laughs> Always harass her. She loves it. Uh, where were we? Oh, that wrap. The wrap module or the wrap relay. Uh, powered from the body module, um, being that we know the door locks work from the body module. Before we go grabbing a scan tool, I just want to check real quick. The body module has a ton of power wires that uh, feed it. As a matter of fact, it looks like there's four there, five, six, seven. Seven different powers into that module. I am curious, from a curiosity standpoint, uh, you know, are we are we missing the powers even feeding those? You know, this is a quick enough check. I'm gonna go get my glasses, see which fuses are which, and then uh, with the key on, we're just gonna kind of shoot down some of these. I guess we could just shoot down them uh, just to see. But it is handy to know which one's which. It does not look like we're missing, you know, like main power here uh, in this fuse box because it does seem to be lighting up some of these fuses however none of those down here light up and it looks like a lot of these might be 10 amps so let me just grab my uh, glasses see which fuses they are and just see if we have power here then we're gonna go and see who's talking and who's not okay let's see got our glasses on RVC RVC there's a 10 amp there that's above that relay there oh she's hot uh, then we got the Oh, that's right signal, left signal. Okay, ain't worried about those. Interior lights, BCM. Okay, I see how this is splitting now. BCM's this 10 amp up here. That one's hot. Backup fuse. Chisel. Your collision high mounted stoplight. That's this 10 amp up here. Okay. Okay, I think that's enough stuff that would turn it on. The other stuff is just for uh, like turn and signal functions, uh, things like that coming out of the BCM. Left turn, right turn, that's 1515 here. Power, 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 power. Okay. All right. We know what we know. We know the BCM is not turning on this relay that turns on the other jiggly bits. Let's see. We'll leave that off for right now. Let's plug in a scan tool now that we know a few little tiny things. See who they've been talking with, who they've been dealing with. I was just walking over to type in the VIN, but I'll be dipped at auto ID'd. I find that kind of hard to believe. I didn't think for a minute we were going to have communication with anything. Well, in this case, I'm going to let it go through and do, a, do an auto deal here. Let me see what HVAC unit it has in it. It's got the dual zone. Uh, I'll let it do a full system scan here and UH8. Let me look. Okay, getting the computer, huh? 
gosh, we're just coming to get you. We need a cat skin. Yes. Come here. Come on, I know. You're a good kitty. You're a good kitty. Yeah. Yeah, you're a good kitty. Oh. <laughs> well, hello. Uh, very unusual. I did not expect to see any green lights or other lights. Um, what, ABS is not talking? What's this one? Digital radio receiver. Need seat module, which we probably don't have, but we should have. This has ABS, right? God, God, who doesn't have ABS nowadays? Oh, this car, this car straight up got no ABS. I think this car's got no ABS. I'll be dang. I haven't seen that since I was a boy. All right then. <laughs> That's interesting. Who would have guessed? Who would have thunk? Let's get the report and see what the survey says. Lost com with body module. Lost com with body module. Instrument panel. That's a history code, history code, lost count with BCM. Okay. Theft deterrent. Pass, history code. Pass, pass, pass. High voltage. I wonder if somebody put the charger on it and set it to nuclear. Let's put the battery in, put it on boil. Pass, pass, pass. Those look like history codes. Okay. I'm going to say. We're gonna come up here, lost count with BCM. Failed, 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 failed. This ignition not run, fail. Okay, what's curious is it appears that we can talk to the BCM, is that correct? It did turn green. Oh, very interesting. Uh, what do we want to look at? I don't know what we want to look at. I didn't think anything was going to work here. Uh, inputs. Now support what? What the world? Why does it let me in here if we can't do anything? Possible wrong vehicle selected. Oh. Oh. Now we're getting the no-com deal. This is very interesting. Okay. All right, we got some funky funk going on. Read codes. I've never seen this happen before. Where it actually acts like it communicates with it, but it doesn't. Look at this, we can pull calibration number from it. Hmm. Let me poke around here for a minute, folks. This something sus. I just want to look at pin six and fourteen on a data link connector where our high speed data comes from. It doesn't appear to be anything unusual. You know, we're two and a half down to you are know, one and a half volts roughly and uh, our can high, two and a half to three and a half. Like I say, it doesn't look, you know, real suspect. Just at a glance. Okay. Well, folks, we are gonna have to look into what the world is going on with this body module and why can we Kind of talk to it, if you will. So this is pretty interesting to me, folks, because I don't think the the actual physical layer, the wires, I don't think we're gonna find that they're broken. We started the data link connector. Okay, let me uh, let me switch hands here. Uh, let's see here. We start at the data link connector and it comes down, and I don't know if this has uh, BCIM, I think it does goes through data link connector through the VCM or not through it into a terminating resistor. 
and then it splices off and goes through the body module out of the body module and then you know this one doesn't have abs and down through here and up around town through the training module oops out of the training module into the ECM, which has the other terminating resistor. I would think if, you know, the wires were chewed up here, or the wires were chewed up here, or there was a physical break, we, we would have an issue. We would have no comm with the trainee, and we'd have no comm with the ECM. I think just to verify this, the easiest thing to do is go to the data link connector, check our terminating resistance. We expect to see 60 ohms, and we'll see if we have that, and if we do, at that point, you know, we know that the wires are intact. You know, no, no further checking on the wires, despite seeing them chewed up under the hood. That's a problem, but it's not the problem. And that's, that's where you got something like this, folks. You don't want to get screwed by some red herring sitting there and start fixing all these wires that are bare. Uh, at that point, we need to go right to the body module. Now, why can we talk to it? I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of acting just like a corrupt module which that would be quite the little ordeal, wouldn't it? Um, if indeed we just have a bad module, and perhaps we do, in which case we'll go and we'll, you know, data in, data out. Do we have serial data wake up? Um, I assume that's a serial data wake up line, isn't it? Yeah, acc accessory wake up, serial data, and then serial enabled, uh, serial, data, serial data enabled. That's with JL9. This one doesn't have JL9, because I think JL9 is ABS. Where are we at here? ABS with JL9. Yes, okay, so that would be the serial data enable coming out of the body module to the ABS if it had it, but it doesn't. So we would just be looking at powers, grounds, serial data wake up, and have a nice day. <laughs> now the body module does have a second data line going to it, the GM low speed, um, you know, that runs like, you know, the radio and, you know, a couple of little nonsense things like that. So, pretty interesting. Let's let's check our terminating resistance, and then we're going to go right to the body module and do some checks at the body module. To check the terminating resistance, you got to have the key off. All the networks have to go to sleep. I'm super duper impatient, so I unhooked the battery. Let's grab a 10 mil and get that thing unhooked, because that's the easiest way, and that's the best way to make sure that you don't get slid. You don't want to get slid. Oh, it's already kind of loose. Because if there's any data being transmitted across there, something funky, it'll uh, give you a false positive. Nobody likes the false positives. Oh, I'm not pregnant. Three months later, oh yeah. Number six, number 14, we're expecting to see 60, survey says 60-ish, 61.7. Good enough for the girls we run with. Our physical layer's intact. Weird stuff, man, weird stuff. According to service info, survey says, that is your steering column. That is your inflatable restraint. This is your instrument panel carrier and numero 40 for our Spanish viewers. That is the body module. Looks super convenient. Whoa, sparks. Especially when I think the power seat doesn't move also because I believe that gets its power. Oh, I got the power. I think that comes from the wrap relay also. Awesome. Great. Oh, oh, look at that. Whew, <laughs> lucky us. Oh, wait a minute, yeah, power seats are full-time, aren't they? Ugh. All right, let me find this little guy. Oops. Oops. Pulled a little hush panel off. I think the little guy lives right here. That would be super convenient. Kind of. There you go. Zip tie there or something. Okay, yeah, there's one Christmas tree fastener there. Oh, 
Oh boy, let's see if we can't. If I get that loose, that thing might come down where we can do our testing and everybody gets to see, which would be highly convenient. When it comes to making a bajail. Mother lover, there we go. Okay. Sometimes you gotta get a little rough with it. What the friggity friggle? Ah, that car's just so stupid. Okay. Stupid cars. Stupid people, stupid cars. Okay. Oh, oh, well that's nice. Had to get down. That's the one Christmas tree faster here. I didn't break it. We just got a little rough with it. A little heavy-handed, I like to call it. What's that? Oh, it's nothing. Just a flake. A wing of a moth, it appears to be, if I had to. Yes, if I was going to send that to the lab, I think that's what it came back as. Your common moth. Looks like all of our powers, possibly all of our powers and grounds, might even run into one plug. I see a whole bunch of red with white stripes here. Everything looks to be right in a row. That would be cray cray. And by that, I mean handy. Let's get our diagram. Let's get a high amperage test light, aka a headlight. Let's nuke this baby. Got our diagram. We also have a piece of tape. Because I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed here. And my memory's not very good. I've used my context clues, if you will. I see connector. Don't pretend you can see, you idiot. Connector C3. Has two grounds at pin one and pin five. I see a connector here. That's the third one in from this side that has a ground at pin one and pin five. And it also has a power at three and four. Uh, let's see here. And we said that was connector C3. Has power at. What the world? I'm just trying to pin three, C three, two and three. Oh yes, two and three, oh okay, okay, okay. They have the connectors all split up across here and it makes it kind of difficult. That's why I wanna label this. So connector, I'm, I'm sorry, so pin one and five are ground and two and three are power. C three has a pin two there and C three has a pin three way over here, okay. So I just wanna label these which connectors which because otherwise I'll be I'll be going nuts okay so we got connectors one through seven number one is your green and then progresses down to gray that's number seven so let's uh, I'm just gonna go you probably can't see because of light but I'm just gonna go right across this and we're gonna see who they've been talking with who they've been dealing with and it looks like from the diagram that all of these fuses are hot at all times. The fuses that we're gonna check currently are hot at all times. And that's what we wanna know. So we don't have to worry about key position, however the battery is hooked up. I'm going to grab a ground. So we're gonna go, well being that we know what this connector is, there's no sense in having it plugged in. If we can just unplug it easily, and we can see all of our pins. It doesn't look like anybody's been here to touch this thing. Okay. All right, we're gonna go on one of the grounds. On connector C3, we'll go with number five. Number five, and then we're gonna check the power source. We got the power there. We got the power there. Let's check our other ground on pin one. Power, power, okay. We're gonna cross these off our list of who's good and who's bad. 
So connector C3, number one, good. Number five, good. Those are both of our grounds. Those are both good. And then connector C3, pin number two is good. And connector C3, pin number three is good. Both of those are powers. So two powers, two grounds. Now we gotta go to connector C2. Let's take and uh, unplug that little fella so we can see what we need to see. Ringy dingy dingy, there's C2. What numbers are we looking for there? We're looking for powers on C2, pin numero two. Is that all that's on C2? Yes, so pin number two, which appears to be a color of red with a white stripe. We're gonna use our ground from our previous connector. Very gingerly back probe that. And we're gonna tap this one from the back side as well. And we have a nice bright light. Light, bright. Copy that, okay. I'm gonna get this guy. Mr. Fumble Fingers here. Get that one plugged in. Get that one plugged in. We're gonna cross a C2, pin two off our list as a good power. Now we're gonna go to pin C4, <laughs> connector C4. Reminds me of that scene from Rush Hour. C4, man, where'd you get C4? I've been looking all over for that. It's <laughs> my favorite scene. <laughs> Gosh, I love I love rush hour. Looks like pins one, two, three, and four. Let's verify that. Pins one, three, four, two, and ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Number ten. What color are you? C4. Let's do one, two, three, and four first. First and foremost because they're the easiest ones and I'm gonna have to kind of flip it over here to get a good gander at it. Okay, pin one, check. Pin two, check. Pin three, check. Pin four, check. Okay, let me cross those off. One, three, four, two. And then it says pin 10, red with white. I don't quite believe it should but I don't. There's one, two, three, four. Now oh, we're gonna have to get a diagram because I think 19, 25, and, well, there's a couple more red with whites. Oh, no, there's not. There's one, two, three, four. There's the fifth one. Let me just, um, before we get a diagram, you know, it's not like anybody's been down here moving wires or anything. Let's just, uh, we're going to base this one off wire color, and then I'm going to verify it here in a minute. So we're into the ground. We're going to go into what we suspect is pin number 10. Um, and then let's see here. And that one lights up. Okay, I'm gonna put just a question mark on number 10 just so I verify that that pin is correct. So now we gotta go to C1, and I'm gonna have to grab, well, being that we're in C4, there is a ground in there. Uh, stand by, I gotta grab a um, uh, different tool here. Uh, actually, I lied to you, I had to talk to Josh. I could hear him standing behind me. Uh, let's see, well, plus I grabbed a test light. We want to check that ground that is in uh, C4 at pin number nine. It's all black. And oddly enough, it is right next to the last wire we tested, which is supposed to be pin 10. I mean, that's not odd. It's just they don't seem to go in order. But so oftentimes when the connector, when the pin
pins change size, sometimes the numerical order um, changes. I guess if you know, you know. You'll know what I'm talking about. So we're going to go into the back of that ground. We're going to go into the number 10. So we're doing 9 and 10. It's too damn tiny to get in there. Let's go into the front side of it very lightly. There we are. So pin number 9-er in connector C4 has a good ground. So we have one more input to check. And that is... I'm sorry, that is an output. That is a 5 volt output. Off run crank voltage. Okay, let's see. What else do we have for 12 volt inputs? We're going to plug this back in because we should have some ignition switched inputs coming from the ignition switch. So, so far, what do we know? We know that we have good powers, good grounds, and we know that we have good communication wires both coming in and coming out of the body module. Well, at least by our resistance check we do. We have a ignition one voltage, a pink wire, on connector C1, pin number 14. C1, 14, pink wire. We're gonna go up here to C1. We're not gonna count, we're just gonna look for the pink. <laughs> now, let's see. Okay, what do we got here? There's a pink wire. I don't think we have to count because we might. There's actually two pink wires. And this one is labeled, I believe. So that's 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So it's not that wire. So 22, so that would be, what number did we say it was? 14, so 14. So it must be that other pink wire. Let's make a good assumption. If we don't see our test results that we anticipating on seeing, then we will make a different change. Or we'll make a, we'll go look. We're supposed to be hot and run and start on the pink wire. That is fused on a 10 amp fuse. So we can use a high current test light without fear of letting the smoke out of anything. So we will very lightly back probe the pink wire. Now again, this is an ignition switch input. And start and run, I believe it is. So we're gonna back probe the ground, a good ground, which we already know we have. And then we're gonna verify our equipment works, and it does. And then we're gonna very lightly back probe this pink ignition feed wire. Okay. We're gonna reach up. Mother freaking keys are gone. Oh, they're right here. Calm down. We're gonna go to run and we should see a light light up. Where's the hole, fella? Run, start. Run, start. We have good power input there. Now we need to go to a different one. Pin number 21. And it appears to be downtown Brown. That's right on the edge of that connector. Okay. Pin number 21, downtown Brown. Downtown Charlie Brown. Okay, we're back probed into it. We're going to find us a good ground. Which is right here. Hello, ground. And that one is supposed to be hot in run and accessory. There's accessory. There's run, there's start. Run, accessory, off. Okay, there's all of those inputs. And we are down to one last input to the body module. So basically with those tests that we just did, let me look at you like this. Listen to your pop pop. Um, with those tests we just did, we verified that the ignition switch works. The power to the ignition switch is good. All of the powers and grounds are good. The BCM is receiving the, hey, I turned the key on signal. Okay, so that's good. We're, we're leaning. 
I'm starting to lean here towards a bad body module. We need to make a couple more checks. The other input check here is there is a five volt wire coming out of the BCM that goes to the ignition switch that comes back to the body module. I think it's used for power moding. It's difficult with this diagram to say what's what. I don't know as if that would bring our whole our whole show to a halt here. Um, I do not see the serial data wake up wire on this. Let me go get that from our other diagram. Let's find out what wire that is. I believe that is just a 12 volt signal. If I had to take a big fat guess in my days of remembering working on GM, I would say it's probably this blue with white stripe here, I think is what it is. But let's go get a different diagram instead of guessing and see what we see. Well, I was pretending to be smart. I thought it was light blue, but I don't think it is accessory. Wake up serial data, C4, there's that C4 again. Pin number 19, dark blue. I knew it was blue of some sort. Dark blue. I do not know, but we're gonna find out. I do not know, oh, wait a minute. We're gonna try this test light. This is a low current test light. The other day on the Snap-on truck, I bought an LED test light. Can you imagine that? Um, that's what this guy did because oftentimes not often but we've needed one on occasion there's a dark blue wire hello dark blue wire on c4 we're gonna assume number 19. a uh, word to the wise folks if you're working on a car and it looks like somebody's had their beaters in there uh don't assume pinout numbers He is on. Oh, there it is. I thought it would light a test light. There's our serial data wake up. Off. On. That's off. I don't know who sends out the wake up signal. That's key off on me. Uh, I assume that would turn off. Where, where is our wake up signal? from about around town accessory wake up I'm not seeing it here on my diagram I don't know if it's complete thought ECM but could be wrong let me just probe in there again okay it's off now wake up why don't you put on a little makeup little chop suey for you who likes chop suey yes I listen to a variety of music okay so we have serial data wake up let's move on we can't cross that off this diagram but we can give it a little check mark on this diagram serial data wake up check folks I'm a thinking that we simply have a bad body control module. How ironic. In the words of Alanis Morissette, we go from system of a down to Alanis Morissette all in the same video. This is like a death row pardon two minutes too late. Or perhaps a no smoking sign on our cigarette break. Isn't it ironic, don't you think? Um, because this guy thought he was gonna have some mouse action Mouse action. Let me get some action from the back section. Who's that? House of Pain or BC Boy? This guy's got too many lyrics in his head. Um, what else are we? What else should we check? I don't. I don't believe anything. I mean, we could. You could undo your data wires here and check terminating resistance going both ways, but we know it's going to be 120 because we have 60 going through it. The only other input we didn't check is the white wire, which we would have to have a DVOM for because 
that is a five volt signal coming out i guess we can check we can check our five volt coming out pin c on c1 pin four which is white with black interesting oh i see it there okay white with black should be five volts coming out and then coming back to pin number two on a white wire which it is of a certain voltage after it runs through a resistor in the run position let's just do that for poop and laughter let me go grab a needle oh wait a minute we could probably just use let's just use our light this guy so we said that the five volt reference coming out white with black pin four unos dos trace four oh pin four where are you wow i mean baby there we go are we in nope Uh, might be in just enough to touch it. No, we're not. No, nope. let me go get a real needle. Just <sighs> had to deal with the drama of a delivery driver. It's like dealing with little children. Gosh. Crazy Dave, he's our Tuesday through Friday driver. He's complaining about the Monday driver, the guy we call Shrek. If you saw him, you'd know why. Uh, looks just like Shrek. I don't even know his real name. We have. He's been called Shrek for so long. <laughs> oh, let's see. Here comes that train. I hear the train coming. It's coming round the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. Wow, did we we went from System of a Down, Atlantis Morissette, <laughs> all the way to Johnny Cash. That's called diversity, people. Diversity. That reminds me of this episode of The Office. Let's see. We're in the ground. I just plugged in Bob here. We're in the ground. And this should be five volts out. All right? Isn't that what? <laughs> I don't even know what wire we're in at this point. I just picked one. Uh, five volts out white with black pin four white with black pin four C1 let's make sure that our DVOM is functioning as it should and it is not why is that not why, why don't we have What the world? We're not plugged up? Oh, we weren't plugged up all the way. Ha! Verify your test equipment, fool. Okay. We now know that we have a functioning DVOM. We have 12 volts here at the DLC. Or as the old timers call it, your ALDL. Your assembly line data link. And it does not appear that we have five volts rocking out of the body control module. Let's make sure our key is on, which it isn't. However, now it is. And we have, survey says, 41 millivolts. We have no five volts coming out of our body control module. We are fully probed in. We're gonna go to a 12 volt source here. We have 12 volts. We have no five volt reference coming out. That's cool, man. And by cool, I mean not cool. So does that mean our body modules bad? Bad to the bone. I'm throwing some George Thorogood while we're here. Must be. I'm gonna make the unofficial official call that our body control module. It is now 9:30 a.m. Time of death. 
and I believe it died of natural causes. Hard to say, but looking at our evidence, it appears that that's it. I have no other reason to believe anything else, but I'm gonna look at other diagrams. I don't think something else can take it down. We have no five volt reference coming out of it. We have all of our powers and grounds and switched inputs going into it. We have good data communication going through it, and we have a serial data wake up that tells me that our VIC is DOA. I'm gonna make sure that our five volt reference isn't short of the ground, which it's not. If I were to touch something with my test light that was short of the ground, it would light up like that. You see how it lights up? I'm touching our 5 volt reference wire and it doesn't light up. It's not short of the ground. That's the other thing I was thinking of. What if we applied 5 volts to it? Then what happens, Rocco? I don't know. Does it miraculously come alive? I don't know. I don't know, Eric. Going on World Wide Web. Wilbert, you pulled a bath. Uh, prior to that, oh, inventory and what fits. Oh, you can look that up there. I didn't do that. I went to uh, car-part.com, not a sponsor, and it appears that this thing fits from like 07 to 12. Enclaves, Lucernes, Impalas, uh, Equinoxes, Traverses, Express Vans, Acadias. It looks like it fits everything. As a matter of fact, there's 696 pages of cars. And they're pretty inexpensive. Wilbert, you pulled a bath. I figured, well, we know how to take it out of an Impala. They have 31 vehicles matching the Chevrolet Impala. And here's a whole list of them. <laughs> we keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. <laughs> well, we need to make music reference it today. Before we head to Wilbert, you pulled a bath. Not a sponsor, we're gonna end this video here because I know it's gonna run a little long and sometimes you guys don't like the long ones and sometimes you guys don't like the two-parters but you guys are gonna have to get over it. I'm gonna go there, get that hopefully uh, today. We'll come back, we'll toss it in there, we'll see if we guessed the right part. If we did, hooray. If we didn't, we'll keep moving on. Uh, always a good time to ask yourself, if this doesn't fix it, what am I going to do next? And of course, I've already asked myself that question. The answer is, I don't know. Send it to the dealer to get the wiring harness replaced. That's what we would do. <laughs> I'm kidding. This will fix it. I know it will because this is where our data led us. Relatively common on these to have body modules go bad, so I'm not super surprised. But it is quite interesting that the guy found the red herring of the uh, mice and the chewed up wires and, and stuff of that nature. So, uh, so that's pretty interesting. Don't rabbit trail just because you see stuff like that. Look at it, note it, observe it. You know, obviously make sure wires aren't touching. And know the data wires being chewed up if they shorted together will not take out your body control module. You can short those data wires together all day long. It'll drop communications, but it will not ruin the module. Um, and that's, that's that. We'll see you guys on part two and see if we get lucky and see if we're right. Thanks for watching.